All right, and we are back, and here is the skin that we will be playing with this time. It is the cultist skin. So what's with the skull? Like, what does that represent in the move kit? Um, nothing. That's just uh, that. So most of the uh, custom skins, the ones that are more than just a, a recolor, have custom animations, and that's the cultist skin's um, standing animation. Gotcha. Hell yeah, we're on the train! Yep. So a nice little intro here, and uh, in just a second. All right. So you see the uh, the assault rifle here, the um, heavy rifle. Oh. It's gold. Which means that uh, this is the part where I get to admit I cheated. Oh, sick. Now I want to I want to clarify that. At 0% of the footage that I recorded and I'm showing this playthrough is cheated footage. When I say I cheated, I mean that there was a bunch of that um, uh, prep work uh, gameplay that I did where I cheated because some of the cosmetics require you to play the game on, like, Ultra Nightmare. And, oh. I mean, I could have done it legit, but it would have um, delayed the playthrough by one to two months and would have made me hate a game that I love. Yeah. So. I'm of the opinion, like, if you want the reward, sometimes just give yourself the reward. So what's your opinion on golden weapons? Uh, like, in this game? No, in general. Like, if you like the aesthetic. Um, it, it depends. A, a lot of times the, the cosmetic just comes down to what it takes to... Acquire it, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm more uh, inclined to get r to wear rarer ones and more difficult to get ones. But pure pure gold can look good. Yeah. While I don't share Wooly's... In in oh, sorry. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. While I don't share Wooly's opinion of all gold is bad, um, I do think that it would be nice if some gold had some accent stuff in it to make it not just one color or one material. Black and gold is a very good combination. Oh, yes. And I, I should also mention, the only things I cheated to get were some weapon skins, not all of them, but some of them, um, a couple of uh, podiums, I think it was mostly just one, and a couple uh, backgrounds, but all of the actual uh, Slayer skins, I got those legit. Nice. But yeah, I, I really wanted to do it where I didn't have to use any cheated ones. At first, I was just going to not do them. But then I saw how a couple of the later ones, like uh, the menu backgrounds, were just a little too perfect to leave out. So I said, eh, whatever. So how did you cheat? There is a, uh, a Nexus mod that um, kind of gives you a lot more options in the console. So you could turn off uh, all damage that would go to the Slayer. Oh, wow. That's pretty much all I did. Oh, so you still ran it on Ultra Nightmare. You just weren't touchable. Yes. Okay, I can respect yeah, so that. So I, so I played through, let's see, I played through the base campaign and both DLCs on, on Ultra Nightmare, and I also did... Uh, um, Ancient Gods Part 1 on Extra Life Mode. I did that one... I think I did that one legit. So the story was is that when I did my second playthrough of this game, I uh, finished the game and uh, on the base campaign and realized, wow, I, I could have done Extra Life Mode. And then I went on and did Ancient Gods Part 1 and still didn't do Extra Life Mode because I didn't do it on the campaign. And I said, I should just do it now. And so on Ancient Gods Part 2, I did do Extra Life. So originally, I was planning on doing this playthrough, uh, also doing Ancient Gods Part 1 on Extra Life Mode, but I ended up doing it um, on that mode as part of my prep work, so it wasn't necessary. You can one-shot a pinky in the butt? That's crazy. Yep, they retain their weakness from 2016, where their unarmored uh, backside is their weakness. I just figured it always usually went to Glory Kill Stagger when I did that. 
Mm -hmm. But the main thing and that a lot of people missed because they didn't read the, uh, the codex was pinkies die in a single blood punch. Yeah, that's something I definitely used a lot. Also, I believe that they tweaked it. In in 2016, if you tried to jump over a, a pinky, most of the time they'd hit you anyway. I think they tweaked their hitbox so that jumping over them is a lot easier and more consistent in Eternals. So that's more of an option. Oh, good. So, speaking of the console, and before I forget, between w this session of recording and next session... I would love to show you that funny glitch I found about dashing and then punching where the game doesn't like it. Ooh, okay. So right here you'll notice I'm using the uh, meat hook a lot even when I don't need to. That's to grind out the mastery. Right. The meat hook, that's one of the few things I grinded out as fast as I could. Yeah. So another uh, difference between this and 2016 is that um, in 2016, just like with a lot of sh video game shotguns, the the game spawns a number of pellets, and uh, the game determines what gets hit based off of which pellets hit. Um, in 2016, these pellets would always be in a random um, configuration, which is what most games do. In Eternal, they wanted to make it more consistent and less of a, a roll of the dice. So the pellet uh, distribution from the super shotgun is always the same. That's really cool. Yum. Yeah, you can see how often I'm uh, chainsawing enemies just to make sure that I'm on top of my ammo. Does it also give you health ever or no? The chainsaw? I don't think so. I think you have to uh, glory kill to get that. Which you also notice that I glory kill pretty much whenever I have the option, just in case. Yeah, that's smart. It saves ammo, it gets you a little health, which every little bit matters. Love that one. Mm-hmm. I don't actually know what the bone for the bicep is called. Huh. And my first instinct whenever I get surrounded is to get out of there, regroup, and uh, get a um, better handle on things. That ice bomb is handy for that. Mm-hmm. And there will also be no uh, Slayer Gate this time, because you, as you can see in the top right, this... Uh, Level has a boss at the end of it. Our first oh. true boss. You know, when the Mancubus lays down its uh, the stuff on the floor, it always throws me off guard. I never learn. It, it, it can be hard to go hitless against uh, Mancubi when they have that move, yeah. But I'm always like, why am I on fire? Oh, yeah. Oh, you can see on the ground there some of those uh, ray tracing reflections. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, uh, you know, this, this base, Doom Hunter base, is in the same, uh, you know, North Pole complex as the cultist base, but... It's uh, got a little different feel, more um, science-y. Yeah. I, I doubt it. I would love to see the voice actor for that guy behind the booth. Ooh. So we get our little preview here of New Enemy, which I... I kind of knew about from the beginning since he was one of the uh, first enemies that they talked about when the game was fully revealed at uh, QuakeCon 2018. And I don't follow any of that stuff, so I was surprised.
Oh, I just realized the eye or sockets platforming. are where the flame comes out. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it just made it. So, wanted to talk briefly about battle mode. Um, battle mode uh, was the game's uh, multiplayer mode. Um, and uh, it's. A lot of people, when it was announced, weren't uh, too stoked about it being like uh, asymmetric, one versus two, one's a slayer, two are demons, uh, because, I mean, it just sounded sort of gimmicky and like it wouldn't have much staying power. And uh, people would have preferred, I think, the uh, more basic stock standard, um, like arena, Halo like uh, multiplayer that they had in 2016. Despite it not really being like, um, like the the main game, and I th I think I think the reason why they went with battle mode in Eternal was that they wanted to make the multiplayer more similar to that of the single player. But how do you do that? You know, how do you have give someone the same amount of options and flexibility and weapons and everything that you have in single player in a multiplayer context? And I think their solution was, well, the entire point of the uh, um, single player is you versus an army of demons, so have one player against two player-controlled demons, and that would uh, be a better representation of a, a better transition. The thing is, is that as interesting as that is, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something that people are going to want to play very much. Yeah, fire um, horde mode was supposed to be kind of a firefight mode, right? Uh, sort of. It was, uh, more like, it was, like, level-based, and, um, you would try to get a high enough score in a limited number of rounds while not dying. Mm -hmm. Which, there were two skins that you could acquire via Horde mode, which I show off later in the playthrough, but yeah. I'm gonna make a joke about I, the I didn't get also. a whole lot out of Horde mode. Mm -hmm. no, I'm gonna make a joke about the carcass, but since you killed it already, I'll wait till the next one shows up. What did I call the mancubus as a internet joke? Did I say redditor? The redditor? Yes. Okay, then I know what I'm gonna say. The moment I saw mm -hmm. the carcass, I knew in my heart. <laughs> Yeah, so right there, uh, for some reason, the platforms didn't raise up uh, as much, huh. which is another like sort of um, thing about this game where it's like, it's just a teensy bit janky, I think. Mm -hmm. So have you ever played or seen much of Titanfall 2's campaign? I have played Titanfall 2's campaign twice, and okay. I absolutely loved it. Then I would like to compare this level to the best level in Titanfall 2 that I've gotten to, where you're slowly watching something get built. Ah, uh, yes, the factory. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good concept for a level, you know? Mm -hmm. you're, you're going through an assembly line, and you see the stages of production, and then it pays off at the end. You see the full... Uh, creation yeah it's a it's a good uh, level concept yeah. i hope to see it more in the future this monstrosity got me hurt quite a few times candelabra Aha, so I always get, th there's a couple of little corridors that look like this, and I get confused about which ones are which, because mm -hmm. some of them have uh, some goodies, and some of them don't. That was a sick headshot. Yeah, I remember. Well, he was already staggered. It wasn't that hard to hit. Yeah, I just, I'm impressed his head blew off. Yeah, they, they, I think they made it so that um, any uh, headshot that kills will uh, blow the head off. Why, if it isn't a Discord Oh, there's mod. a carcass. <laughs> they got their white knight shield and everything. Oh, no! Insert joke about Discord kitten. I don't even know. Uh -huh. 
Your Honor, that is not my Discord account. Uh, Kakarot, it's bad. What could it be, Vegeta? The DMs have linked Vegeta. We have to blow up the Earth. Video's so good. Oh. So does overloading their shield, like, is it worth it? Because I did it a lot with the cards. Uh, it, it does it does cause an explosion that damages enemies around them, and I believe it, if it hits them, it usually causes them to stagger. Okay. I tried to so disable the, the these cultists... four a lot. Oh. I don't think you can. No. Nope. It was a waste. Anyway, the cultist. Yeah, so the uh, the cultist um, aesthetic on the the skins is not my favorite. One of the uh, Marauder skins for the playable Marauder in in multiplayer was the uh, cultist one, and I think that uh, that's like one of the worst multiplayer demon skins because mm. it's just like, oh hey, it's it it's supposed to be something fun. Like the the lumberjack skin for the Marauder is way better. Than just it's, a lumberjack oh, skin? I, it's it's like in the yeah they got kind of silly and those those are the best uh, alt great. skins for but battle mode but it's just like oh it's slightly different than the one in in canon that's not fun which uh, I out of all of them oh got yeah I had some uh, had some stutter there. I think out of all of the playable demons, weird. the one that got the uh, shafted the most was the Revenant, because one of his skins mm. was just uh, a skin uh, harkening back to his Doom Two sprite, which is kind of lame. So I did this room. I mean, get wrong. silly with it. I thought there was glass mm -hmm. in that window, so I rodeo jumped around, never going through that hole at first. So I'm impressed I could even make it through the room. <laughs> Almost like that. Basically, it was it was definitely some sequence breaking by accident. Not much. Just yeah, I don't think I did it the intended way here either. But here we are, and we get our I think our first Commander Keen song. Well, at least the Revenant gets the Dute skin, so there's that. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right, but it, it needs to... And then I think his other major skin was UAC tech, which is better, but still, like, eh. Mm. All right, got another cheat code. No, go down there. Go down. Go down. Uh, yeah, I've been there. I, I think on, on, my, on one of my prep work playthroughs, I even uh, made a mental note to myself, go down there, it's worth it. You get teleported right back up, and then yeah. I didn't do it. I did a oh, lot well, of I'll laps go in back this level. At the end. A lot of laps I didn't need to do. So since we brought up the Doom Hunter, I'm just gonna say it. So does the lore mm -hmm. imply it's an Earth organism that like came from Earth? Because I was reading it and I'm just like, wait, it's indigenous to Earth? I believe that is the implication, yes. That's weird. I think it, it's implied to have lived, like, millions of years ago. I mean, it's basically a lot like dinosaurs. Okay. Like, they were here before us. Right. Yeah, the Agadon Hunters. Mm-hmm. I wish you could have fought one in its prime. We might be able to in, uh, in the Dark oh, Ages. Oh, you're right. Which I want to say that I, I need to look that watch that trailer again, but it, it almost looked like there was a revenant in that trailer, which I don't know how the heck that works. Yeah. The lore is going to be like, a time portal has opened, or some stupid crap. I mean, may, maybe they'll just treat it like the, uh, the grapnel boost in Arkham Origins and be like, don't worry about it. I was always bothered by the word grapnel because I thought it was supposed to be grapple. Maybe it's maybe both are correct. I don't know. That's what drove me crazy. So I went down here first. 
I didn't know you could mm. swing into the upper. I think the, uh, um, it doesn't really matter because that vent behind us leads up there anyway. Yep, that's how I got up there. And I just uh, activated uh, Armor for Blood, which uh, gives us another way to charge Blood Punch, which is to overheal on armor. So if we have full armor, get more, it'll charge up a Blood Punch. Which, I forgot on my first that. playthrough, I uh, left those um, for last, and on this one, I kind of focused on them because they're actually really good. Yeah. Responsible for your people's suffering. Mm, nah, I, I disagree. Lies and so, slander. and because I disagree, I'm going to blow your head off with the super shotgun. So there's a secret in this room that took me entirely too long to figure out. It might be the same one that I had trouble with on my first playthrough. We'll see. Oh, you didn't let the heat blast go off. I don't use the heat blast too much. Oh, that was that was cool. How did he? Whoa. The fact he didn't die, or well, the fact that uh, he like staggered and fell over, I guess faltered, and he yeah. like fell off of his uh, robotic legs and had to reattach them. Oh, I didn't even pick up on that. That's cool. Yeah, I don't think I ever uh, noticed that animation before. Ah, it's up there. There's a Praetor token. Yeah, that's another one that took me a little bit. The map is good for verticality. Mm-hmm. Very smartly designed. Mm-hmm. Which I'm uh, given that Dark Ages is going to have less focus on verticality. I'm sure it'll be uh, even easier to figure out what's going on. It'll be even clearer. Yeah. Prowlers are squishier than they appear. Yeah, that's why I kept being mad whenever they got a lot of hits on me. Blood. I'm not sure. Blood pudding. So I both love and hate this little idea right here. Mm hmm. Of uh, uh, locking us in this tiny little, like, yeah. anteroom. It's kind of neat, but kind of stressful. Gotta get more hits on the meat hook. The meat hook is. Probably my favorite way of dealing with these terrible snakes. Yeah, anything that can lock on is good. The, uh... Oh, love that. Oh! Oh, and now we have a cutscene. I guess they do need blood. Although... It, it, I guess it's more like Kool-Aid with, with how well you can see through it. Yeah. So I thought this was going to be a mini-boss, and I was very disappointed. Like the big turret thing in the ceiling looked like a little mini-boss. Ah, yeah, like a, a Metroid-style um, mm -hmm. defense sentry, yeah. That would have been cool. Has, has Doom done that? They have the wall. Uh-huh. Or am I thinking of Contra? I mean, the the icon of sin in Doom 2 was uh, a wall texture, but... Yes, that's what I meant. But yeah, just like a, a robot sentry. I guess, I mean, Doom is all about fighting demons, but... I guess I wouldn't I mind mean, a, uh, a, a robot enemy. the robot, so... But yeah, the, uh, the lock-on uh, mod for the rocket launcher is also really good at uh, the whiplashes. I just assumed it wasn't fast enough to do the job, and that was my mistake. No, I think there's a. I think that's part of the weapon mastery for the lock-on, uh, is to kill specifically uh, whiplashes. Oh. 
I'm wondering if I didn't get that one then. Maybe, uh, I mean, this game does have a uh, weapon mastery token, so you could have skipped it. Yeah, but I didn't. Most of the I weapon like... masteries I have never done just because I don't even get them until after I start getting the mastery tokens. Ah. Uh. My OCD wouldn't let me use the tokens. My my OCD was like, okay, you can only use them for this one purpose, and if you don't use them, then they uh, then they're basically wasted. So only get the minimum number that you have to, and then use them on the rest. Ah, uh, so I walked around this little uh, area way more than I had to. Which one, which one? Ah. Yeah, getting... Uh, after movement, I would recommend getting frag grenades and uh, ice bomb upgrades. Sounds like we basically followed the same path. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, the reason I walked around a bunch is I did not see that target over there. For yeah. For way too long. Well, it's already partially alive because his hand just uh, closed around yeah. the rocket launcher. I mean, assume the blood was to revive him. Yeah, but maybe he just hadn't gotten the jolt yet. Right. All right, so in here, there was an upgrade that took me way too long to find. Oh, this stupid thing. I had to look it up online. Yeah, there it is. I think since I played this uh, right when it came out, it was too early for any guides, so I just had to figure it out on my own. Yeah. So I saw the thing through the glass, but I couldn't figure out how to lower the staircase, so I assumed you just had to get through from that side, so I spent a long time jumping into the glass. Yeah, uh, even, even experienced gamers never look up. My brother used to make fun of me because... My sister and I playing FPS as we just look at the floor for some reason. I don't know why. All right, let's get the cleanup, including the thing I should have gotten. Yay. And the battery I completely whiffed. Oof. There it is, and I knew exactly how to get it, I just forgot. Wham. Convenience. Thank goodness the air vents are, like, diehard in here. Ah, they're uh, really big? Yep. Mm-hmm. Because real air vents, like, unless, if you're older than, like, two years old, you're not fitting. Nope. One of these days, I have to splamunk mine. Splamunk! That's a good word. Um, I have one of those endoscopic cameras that hooked to my phone. I bought expressly for that purpose. Yeah, I, I might want to get an endoscope for my phone at some point. They're probably pretty useful. Yeah, you could borrow mine first if you'd like. Hmm, maybe. I'm just not Nothing sure what I would I use it, it for. People kept joking I was going to try to save money on a colonoscopy, and I'm like, no! No. All right, let's go to our first real boss fight. And then we'll be able to actually um, get some stuff at the Fortress of Doom with all of our Sentinel batteries. Yeah. So are you going to face me for real, or, oh no, you're just sending in your guy. Telos? Not impressed. He That's looks like one of us. S 
Ooh. All right. So anyone who's played this game before knows, don't bother with the sh uh, with the shield. Just go straight for the sled. And the best way to do that is with blood punches. Yeah, I mean these these guys are the boss variant, which are slightly tougher, but um, ordinarily, if you get two blood punches on their sled, it it takes it down immediately, and then you never have to worry about their shield again. Right, because I was hoping once you overloaded their shield once, it would be gone for good, but that's not the case, is it? Hey, we got this um, super Yay! shotgun mastery. Now this boss is actually kind of tough considering how early on in the game it is. It's interesting you called Doom Guy a heretic. Um I mean he as we learn later, he did basically oppose um these guys god. Right. Who is the con maker. But yeah, it is it is weird hearing demon aligned uh persons calling people heretics. That's Reminds one you don't of, see a lot. Yeah, that's a good one. Reminds me of Hell of a Boss's concept of heaven and hell. Where just because you're in heaven as an angel doesn't mean you're a good person. Yeah, that's that's been a common um, element of um, stories and whatnot over the past, I don't know, 20 years of um, uh, the idea of, hey, maybe... Um, uh, heaven isn't always good and uh, hell isn't always bad. Yeah, because the idea in, I guess, Hell of a Boss and Has Been Hotel is that the humans, you know, either go to heaven or hell. But the demons, they live there. It's their job to do what they do. And the angels, they live there. So their morality isn't as easily defined. Yeah. Um, I actually read a, a manga where um, uh, hell is an I idyllic like uh, Japanese town it's it's <laughs> as Miss Beelzebub likes it's like another peaceful day in hell and it is uh, very pretty and and nice it's, it's like a very yeah. comfy manga that's that sounds nice it reminds me of the great line from the shadow the hedgehog real-time fan dub I'm the devil I punish the evil people I'm not the bad guy here shadow <laughs> oh man I need to watch that again and the Sonic uh, Riders one. I need to give that one another chance. Another. Oh, uh, you chopped his head. Yeah, I um, yeah, as, as you'll see later, like these guys have a range of glory kills, but these boss variants, I think you can only uh, trigger the front one, even if you hit them from a de different uh, yeah. position. Yeah. It made me getting the left sided one way. Oh, we're going down. But yeah, when they lose their sled, uh, the lock-on rockets are extremely effective. Oh, okay, I'll have to remember that. And uh, similarly to the uh, Hell Guards in 2016, we start off with one, and then we fight two, and I think the second, um, when we're fighting two, it's actually a little bit easier. Yeah. Even though I can't really say exactly why, I think maybe they're less uh, resilient, uh, these I think two. this arena helps. Yeah, it's a lot bigger, a lot more room mm -hmm. to move about. Yeah, you can see, I, I, I hardly even saw the second one before I killed this one. Yeah. You know, I forgot about the Hell Guards. Those guys were cool. I wish we saw more of them. They were uh, kind of cool, I guess. I think some people thought that they were the most unfitting of... Uh, Doom enemies, they're the ones that fit in the least with the series, which I can kind of understand. Sure, but you gotta, you know... It's it nice was, to they were cool. Things. Not, not just that they had never been in the series before, but they just felt weird. Yeah, they were like weird, fleshy worm mechs or something. Yeah. Dang it, now I want to watch Men in Black 2. I said worms. <laughs> I mean, there was kind of a uh, a human mech in the first uh, Men in Black. Oh, yeah. No. Yes. No. Yes, you're right. I confuse which one's which, but I never confuse the third one, because that one wasn't as good to me. 
That one was weird. I remember seeing that in the theater. I don't love time travel, but I never saw the the one with Chris Hemsworth and that woman whose name. Oh, Men in Black International. Yeah. I didn't see that one either, but I hear that we didn't miss much. Mm. So yeah, right there, I got him square in the back on that glory yeah. kill, but it still gave me the front animation. Why did you stay here, man? Does, does he not seek enhanced power? Gifts to aid him in his noble conquest. Perhaps in return for my... Yeah, no. So right here, um, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but it's implied that we got this coin uh, by defeating the Doom Hunters, which are like his guardian. Okay. It, it becomes more explicit when we kill the when we get to the third Hell Priest, but um, that that's kind of the implication, which begs the question of where we got the coin for the first Hell Priest at the very beginning of the game. Right. And every time we kill a proper boss, our blood punch gets uh, more powerful. Oh, I didn't know that, or at least I didn't remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, later we'll. This one got more powerful. Later, I think it. The shockwave gets wider. Sick. And uh, at long last, we'll be able to head back to the Fortress of Doom when we start the next part. Groovy.